Hello, everybody. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Really good to have you here with us at this session of the Global Protection Forum. Um, today, we are looking at demystifying cash and voucher assistance and child protection. Um, we're going to be a really interesting session today with colleagues from um, Shafak, Save the Children, Plan International. And the, um, the key objection objection, objective for this session is to look at what are those key barriers and how do we address those um, in terms of the uptake of cash and voucher assistance, um, in particular when we're seeking child protection outcomes. So this session will help familiarise all of you with the resources that are available and it'll also cast a spotlight onto several countries work in this area. So I'm just going to briefly take you through the agenda for the session. So I think that's the next slide, please. So we will start with um, an introduction to CVA and CP. And uh, just to make sure we all know what we're thinking about today. And then we'll focus in on those countries, Peru, Syria, Uganda and Cambodia. And then there will be a chance for discussions to get into those smaller groups in the breakout rooms and they will be language specific so you will be able to uh, select a breakout room in a language that you would like to discuss in um, and then we will finish the session. Uh, we have a few um, little housekeeping tips and uh, things that we're wanting to see happen at this session. I've just realized I forgot to introduce myself, which is very rude, so I apologize for that. Um, my name is uh, Jim Robinson. I'm the Global Coordinator for the Housing, Land and Property Area of Responsibility within the um, Global Protection Cluster. So I'm really pleased to be here and apologies for not introducing myself before and you were wondering who is this mysterious presence on your screen. So back to the housekeeping. So you will all be very familiar with Zoom, I'm sure, but just to, to sort of re-emphasize some of the, the features of today. So ask your questions through the chat process. Um, you can use the reaction buttons to, to applaud, to smile, to celebrate, to thumbs up. Um, and this session is going to use polls to get your views. We're going to use breakout rooms and also Jamboard to, to collect uh, um, your insights as well. And we would ask you to stay on mute in the plenary. If it's possible, keep your video on throughout because it's lovely to see the faces of the people that we're uh, in a session with. Um, and then once you get into the breakout rooms, then mute off, please, you know, get involved, discuss, be present. I know sometimes bandwidth can stop us being able to have our video on. So of course, just do what is possible. Um, as was mentioned earlier, there's interpretation available. We have French, Spanish and Arabic this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are. Um, so if you would like to be um, to, to have uh, interpretation, then I think you click the little globe sort of sphere with lines on it down in the bottom there. Um, and then you can choose the language for, for the interpretation that you would like to hear. Similarly, if you would like to be in a language specific breakout room, then if you could just take a moment to rename yourself. So um, you can see on the screen there, if you would like French, put the letters FR before your name, Spanish, SP, AR for Arabic. So yeah, so please do rename yourself so that that allows the production team to put, put you in the right breakout room for the language you would like. And there is also a live transcript um, available in English. So if you click either the CC button, it's next to the interpretation at the bottom for closed captioning, or in the more button, there's, I think there's a, a show subtitles option as well. So hopefully you will find what you, you need in that. OK, so next slide, please. So we're going to start with a poll just to get the uh, a sense of who is here and, and what, what, their feet, what their work has been on um, CVA and child protection. So the first question. Have you ever implemented cash and voucher assistance for child protection outcomes? That's a simple yes or no. And so you just click there in the yes or no uh, box. And the second question, how confident do you feel designing and implementing cash and voucher assistance programming for CP outcomes? So just choose one of those. Do you feel very confident, 
confident, unsure, or very unsure. So we're just going to get a sense of, of who's here today and what your experience has been with cash voucher assistance and child protection particularly. So we'll give you a, a moment to answer those two questions. And then we will see what the results are. It's quite exciting. I'm feeling the tension building a little bit. Um, wondering what percentages do we think? I mean, I almost want a poll to try and guess the results of the poll, but I don't think that's going to happen just now. Um, great. How are we doing? How, how much longer do we need, do you think? Yeah, it's slowed down. We've got about 65%, 146, uh, for 148. Okay, it just jumped. Come on, let's hit 70%. Okay, yeah, look, I can see 234 <laughs> participants on there. Now, I know not everyone's going to be able to, or it's possible to, to um, answer the questions, but let's, let's, I'll give you 10 more seconds to uh, put your answers in there. It's anonymous, so you can say, you know, it, you, uh, if, if you, if you, um, yeah, feel unsure, for example, but you're not sure if you're allowed to feel unsure. You know, sometimes that is the case. Um, but yeah, so do please answer that and then we will go to the, the results and see, see how we're doing. Okay. Right, well, let's see, shall we? Julie and team, let's uh, see what the, uh, the outcomes are. Okay, so have you ever implemented CVA for CP outcomes? Yes, 24%, no, 76%. Now that's exciting, isn't it? Because that means there's a lot of people here who are gonna be learning about this stuff and haven't yet actually uh, been able to do that. So that's really exciting. So that's, that's, it's gonna be a really interesting session. And the second question, how confident do you feel in designing and implementing these programmings? So again, a small number of you very confident uh, about a third of you confident, and then about half of you that are unsure, and then a few more that are very unsure. So again, it feels like what great learning opportunity this session is. It's brilliant to have uh, you all here. Uh, and for the record, I would put myself in the no and the very unsure brackets as well. So I'm really pleased to be here and to be hearing from uh, some people who've got really great experience with this stuff. So thank you all for um, participating in that poll and that's really helpful for the, the presenters and the other organizers to know uh, who's here so I appreciate that a lot and I'm now going to hand over to Anita Kuraza who's the global CPIE specialist with Plan International and Anita is going to give us an introduction to cash and voucher assistance and child protection which from the look of the polls it's going to be really good for everyone to, to understand a bit more about that so over to you Anita. Thanks Jim. Um... Can you hear me, hear me well? Is that okay? Okay, perfect. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be with you today and welcome everyone and very nice to meet you. As Jim said, in the next few minutes, uh, I will share with you uh, some background information on the linkages between uh, cash and child protection. As you probably know, uh, a significant proportion of uh, humanitarian assistance uh, um, is being given in the form of uh, cash. And as the prevalence of cash and voucher assistance has increased within humanitarian responses, the CP sector has looked into possibilities to capitalize on the benefits of using cash to achieve child protection outcomes. As you can see from this slide, uh, cash and voucher assistance has indeed the potential to achieve uh, positive protection outcomes for children and their families, particularly in situations where uh, economic insecurity is uh, limiting the access of uh, children and families to services and goods that they might need. And also in situation where economic insecurity is uh, um, preventing families from uh, responding to their basic needs, thereby increasing the likelihood families will uh, rely on negative coping strategies. Despite uh, cash and voucher assistance uh, um, can play a role to achieve uh, child protection outcomes, Perceived child protection and safeguarding risk associated with cash are limiting its exploration within child protection program. 
It is true that uh, the introduction of cash and voucher assistance may, um, uh, may uh, cause uh, uh, child protection and safeguarding risk. However, there is no evidence uh, showing that uh, those risks are greater when using cash compared to other assistance modalities, such as, for example, in kind. And also we know that uh, um, risks associated with cash are uh, um, related to context, uh, age, gender, and diversity. So in reality, if appropriately designed, cash and voucher assistance shouldn't pose any risk to children and may in fact uh, um, uh, contribute to achieving child protection outcomes and responding to child protection concerns. What we need to do is the child protection actors need to work together with cash actors in order to assess possible risk that might be associated with cash. And also they need to work together to define strategies that could mitigate against those risks. Lastly, there is unfortunately very limited evidence on the use of cash as a tool to improve child protection outcomes. I think we're improving on this point, but um, uh, yeah, we still have a lot to do. Um, based on recent evidence reviews, it seems that uh, the number of well-designed studies uh, is very limited. And also recently, um, some of us, we took some time to consult with uh, child protection and cash practitioners. And uh, um, most of them highlighted that one of the biggest challenge to implement I was saying that one of the biggest challenges according to cash and child protection practitioners to implement integrated approaches has to do with their uh, um, inability with them not, know, not knowing how to monitor the impact of cash and voucher assistance on child protection outcomes. So once more, cash and child protection actors should work together to generate reliable evidence and to really increase our understanding on the applicability of cash within child protection program. Next slide. Thanks. You have heard me talking about child protection and child safeguarding risk. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with uh, the terminology, um, but I just want to be 100% sure that we are on the same page. So when we talk about child protection, we refer to programming to prevent and respond to abuse, neglect, exploitation, and violence affecting children in different settings. It can be families, communities, schools, institutions. When we talk about child safeguarding, we refer to measures, policies, and mechanisms that our organization establish to keep children and more generally people we work with safe from intentional or unintentional harm caused by people contracted or linked to our organization. It can be staff, it can be volunteers, partners, uh, um, consultants, etc. Next slide, please. What's next? Uh, as Jim said, uh, we will be hearing uh, from our colleagues uh, working at country office level. They will share with us their experience in uh, uh, working on integrated cash and child protection programming. And by doing so, uh, they will introduce uh, some of the recent cash and child protection resources. Thank you so much. I'm now going to hand over to Lori. Thanks. Great, thank you so much, Anita and Jim. And like Anita said, we want to make sure this is interactive. So we're going to open, uh, we're going to do a mentee now. Um, and you should see the mentee link come into the chat box, hopefully soon. And our question for the mentee, there it is in the chat box, is to ask you what risks do children face that cash and voucher assistance can help to mitigate? 
So this is anonymous, um, but if you click on the, the link in the chat box, you should be able to type in some responses to this question. And we'll just give it a few moments before we get started on our, our first spotlight. Great, so we're starting to see different, different elements come in, early marriage coming out, that's great. So we think cash can mitigate child labor, sexual exploitation, malnutrition. Child labor coming out really strong, that's great. Recruitment. Access to education I see coming out as well. Great, so we're all agreeing that we think cash can play quite a significant role in addressing risks that children can face. So we're now going to hear a little bit more from one of my colleagues, David Pellico, who works in cash assistance, uh, focusing on safeguarding homes in vulnerable situations. So David works with Save the Children in Peru and will be presenting in Spanish. So I'll hand over to you, David, and if we can get the PowerPoint back up. Thank you. Gracias. Eh, sí, buenos días con todos y todas. Sí, mi nombre es David Pelicó y soy eh, coordinador regional en Lima, el proyecto de ayuda humanitaria en Perú. Eh, en esta oportunidad eh, voy a presentar eh, acerca de la, eh, eh, lo que tiene que ver con el, la salvaguarda en la atención y en, en la transferencia es efectivo. Eh, como es de conocimiento, el, la política de salvaguarda de la niñez ha sido publicada en el 2019 ¿no? y está eh, traducido en diferentes idiomas eh, para garantizar que el documento sea de, de, de manera plena para todos. Y lo que busca también es analizar los riesgos que, que pueden surgir en la transferencia efectiva a lo largo del ciclo del programa. La siguiente, por favor. El siguiente slide, por favor. Gracias. Eh, lo que también eh, busca el, el objetivo del proyecto es brindar eh, la asistencia de emergencia a migrantes venezolanos en situación de vulnerabilidad y riesgo en el Perú con el fin de cubrir las necesidades básicas junto con intervenciones eh, nutricionales complementarias para mejorar las prácticas de nutrición en gestantes y, y, y niños menores de 5 años de las familias eh, migrantes venezolanas en el Perú. La siguiente, por favor. Sí, la siguiente, el siguiente punto. Eh, los, el, el, el proceso de atención cash con sistema de salvaguarda eh, tiene que ver con eh, el, el primer punto que es capacitación y salvaguarda, es decir, eh, garantizar que todo el staff de Save the Children, eh, nuestros proveedores principalmente eh, financieros con los que trabajamos, entiendan eh, y acepten y cumplen con el compromiso de no abusar, no hacer daño y poner en riesgo a nuestros beneficiarios. También garantizar eh, que los procedimientos de reporte y respuestas ante una situación contra la infancia sean claras y conocidos por todos. Eh, la siguiente, por favor. El siguiente punto tiene que ver con eh, la evaluación y mitigación de riesgos. Eh, en este aspecto, lo que buscamos es eh, revisar las actividades a la matriz de riesgo eh, aplicar, que se aplican en las encuestas eh, y registros con la identificación de riesgo de acciones de mitigación de la salvaguarda eh, eh, para la familia con las que eh, contactamos al momento de iniciar todo el proceso de eh, lo que es la transferencia en efectivo. La siguiente, por favor. El siguiente, el siguiente punto tiene que ver con el punto 3, con la implementación del call center virtual. Es un sistema que es gratuito y accesible para los beneficiarios, permite una comunicación segura para que el staff, eh, eh, porque el staff está capacitado, hacen llamadas que son grabadas, pueden ser supervisadas 
y tiene una línea para reportes, por ejemplo, para informar sobre la fecha y hora en que pueden aceptarse a, co a cobrar el beneficio. El beneficio. Tienen una, una línea para eh, reportes de salvaguarda gestionado por una psicóloga capacitada para dar una respuesta y eh, contención. Eh, también las llamadas pueden ser supervisadas, excepto las de la línea de reporte de salvaguarda de protección infantil, respetando la confidencialidad. En el punto 4, eh, hablamos acerca del uso del, de COBO para el proceso de encuesta y de registro. La siguiente, por favor. Eh, el COBO es, es, es un software con herramientas que ayuda a recopilar datos y usamos para el proceso de evaluación y registro de hogares. Eh, es, el COBO es una plataforma digital. Eh, toda la información es almacenada en COBO. Eh, solo el staff de MIL eh, tiene acceso a la data recopilada. Eh, el, contacto al, eh, el primer contacto al posible beneficiario lo realizamos a través del call center, eh, quienes se registran a través de un link de, de prescripción. Una vez que tenemos la información de las familias, nos contactamos a través del call center. Al, al tener la data, se aplica la encuesta de evaluación y registro en el protocolo para llamar a la familia incluye la explicación del, del staff consentimientos y aseguramos que niños y niñas u otras personas a cargo estén seguros durante nuestra llamada. Es importante resaltar que eh, este es un proceso eh, en donde interviene un equipo multidisciplinario, eh, en donde están, están el, el equipo de CASH, el equipo de MIL, eh, lo que es monitoreo, evaluación, revisión de, y aprendizaje, eh, también salvaguarda, seguridad. El siguiente punto, por favor. Por favor. Eh, el punto 5 tiene que ver con los canales y reportes y atención al beneficiario. Eh, contamos con canales para beneficiarios, socios y proveedores y datis para el staff de Save the Children. La difusión de las, de, digamos, de las reglas de salvaguarda y canales de reportes son a través de las líneas gratuitas de salvaguarda o protección infantil. Eh, WhatsApp con respuesta automatizada, mensajes de, de texto, eh, también distribuimos flyers y otros materiales de comunicación. La siguiente, por favor. El, el punto 6 eh, tiene que ver con el... Eh, con la identificación y derivación de casos de, de protección, es, es decir, eh, se capacita el personal para, de CASH para la identificación y reporte de casos de protección, se identifican durante las llamadas al beneficiario y eh, las mismas se derivan al sector de protección para eh, lo que es eh, la atención y seguimiento del mismo. La siguiente, por favor. Bien, muchas gracias. Great, thank you so much, David. It's great to hear the work that's being done in Peru and how we can use this guidance um, across the world to really promote the um, safeguarding of children. So before we go on to our next spotlight, we wanted to open up a true or false poll. So this poll is cash and voucher assistance is a modality that poses more risk than other modalities. So for example, in-kind assistance uh, or distributions. And we'll give that a moment while people answer. Maybe give it a few more seconds. I see some responses still coming in. And great. 
great to see the comments in the chat box. Please do, uh, if you've got feedback or comments, it's great to see that. Thanks, Robin, yeah. Okay, great. I think we can probably close that poll if that's all right and project it. So what we see a lot of the time is that there is this belief that cash poses a greater risk than other modalities. And um, what we find is people are hesitant then to use cash assistance uh, over an in-kind distribution. And so uh, we've spent a lot of time kind of in the interagency space looking at how do we address this and how do we understand exactly what the risks are and how we mitigate them. And research has shown that actually cash is not necessarily more risky, but exactly as Robin was saying in the chat box, it's different risks potentially that we need to consider. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Ibrahim Javish, uh, who works for Shafak and can speak to maybe how we looked at some of these risks and how we monitored this in Syria. So over to you, Ibrahim. Thank you, Laurie. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes. Um, good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brian Jawish. Um, I am working with Shafak Organization as Protection Program Manager. Uh, we are based in Turkey and uh, responding to Syria crisis. Um, so we are going to look a little bit more into details at the component of the MND toolkit and. Um, as you can see on front of you, there are mainly three tools that have been developed. Uh, the toolkit was published in 2021, and they are available now in English and uh, Spanish, and hopefully we will see the Arabic and French, trans uh, French translation, uh, translation uh, very soon. So the aim of the toolkit was to support in identifying child protection risk and mitigation strategies, as well as to monitor uh, child protection outcomes. Um, so you will see on the chat uh, a link to the toolkit, so you can access directly and get the, those uh, interesting uh, tools. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, as I mentioned, there are mainly three tools. Um, and there is like a, another tool, it's a, a kind of guidance note on how to analyze the data. But the main tools are three, as you can see on the slide. Uh, the logic of the toolkit is uh, mostly divided into two steps. Uh, the first one is before any kind of uh, CVA starts. And the second one or the another one is after CVA has started. Um, we are going to talk about the first uh, tool, which is focus group discussion uh, tool. Uh, can you please uh, go to the next slide? Um, yes, um, this toolkit uh, is structured to be used as focus group discussion, but still it can be used as KIIs using a uh, uh, or key informant interview using a, a case study. Uh, where you can see inside the toolkit, the tool, uh, a menu of uh, case, case studies, and you can select what, what is most uh, re relevant to your context. Um, um, this tool is to be used by CB actors, child protection actors, cash actors, and meal actors as well. Uh, and to be used with adults and caregivers within a community that have a good understanding of what are child protection risks in that given community. Um, as I mentioned, um, it has been designed to be used before CVA starts. Ideally, it's one month before starting any, any form of CVA. This tool um, will help to identify potential risks and help you to identify actions to mitigate those potential risks and make decisions about program design prior to starting uh, the implementation. The second tool, the next slide. 
This one is a survey tool uh, to be used by all actors. This is not like specifically for child protection, but still can be used by child protection actors. Um, this is to be used after CVA has started with uh, adult caregivers who are receiving CVA as part of humanitarian intervention. The idea of this tool that is provide real-time information on child protection risk and benefits. And then this information can be used to inform adjustment to the way that CVA is being delivered. The first time that should be run should take place um, between seven and 30 days after CVA has started. Um, this tool will help to determine if the cash and voucher assistance has contributed to protection outcomes. It will inform adaptation of cash and social assistance to improve outcomes for children. Uh, it will also identify risk to children posed by CVA as they arise and will identify strategy, strategies to mitigate uh, those risks um, to children posed by CVA. And it will also monitor the effectiveness of risk mitigation mechanism that were put in place. Um, this tool is recommended like to be used several times throughout the life of CBA. Uh, the third tool and the last one. Um, this also um, it's, it's more adapted. This tool is more adapted for programs that have case management component integrated into case into uh, cash and social assistance. Through this tool, we can collect similar information to tool two, but this one is specifically or to be conducted by case managers or child protection staff. Um, this tool has been developed to be um, used by CB team with an idea of interviewing adult caregivers who are receiving case management support as part of, of child protection programs. Um, this tool also will be used or to be used uh, to collect collect information after child uh, cash and social assistance has started uh, at intervals throughout life of cash transfer. Similar to tool uh, number two, this uh, will help to determine is uh, if CVA contribute to child protection outcomes, inform adaptation to cash and social assistance to improve uh, child protection outcomes and also will identify risk and identify mitigation uh, measures. We'll also, uh, this tool will make decisions, will support us in, in make decision on mitigation risk as they arise and monitor the effectiveness of mitigation risk, uh, measures. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yes, like as Shafak, um, as I mentioned, we have been um, uh, uh, involved in the piloting phase of this toolkit. Um, I remember at that time there was a project um, with Save the Children. Um, um, it, it was child protection integrated to uh, cash and social assistance. And we thought that it was a good opportunity to pilot the test and pilot uh, the tools because there was no, uh, there was a lack of tools in our uh, response. Um, next slide, please. And, and one more, please. Yes, I, I will be talking here like briefly our, about our journey in, in working with the MNT tools. We started with the adaptation. Actually, this uh, phase is the most important phase. Uh, it took a lot of work uh, because, you know, it's a global tool and we had to adapt it to our context. There was, uh, we are based in Turkey and our field team in Syria. There was a lot of uh, discussion back and forth and we did a workshop uh, also with the team and to get their inputs and feedback. Uh, of course, after we translate it into Arabic because our local language is Arabic. Um, so through the adaptation, we looked at like mainly adjusting the instructions and the questions um, to be, uh, to be used in the, uh, uh, with it, in the focus discussion and the surveys. And then we finalized the Arabic translation. And then we moved to selection and training of uh, enumerators. Uh, also, it's like an important uh, phase and an important step. We selected the case workers who have been involved in, uh, in case management and CVA because they are 
familiar with the cases and know well the community. Um, an important point here is like the selection should be diverse, um, like from different capacity, uh, gender consideration as well. Uh, um, so at that time, we, we, we were just like starting a, a new project and we selected um, um, a group, targeted group based on each uh, the requirement of each uh, tool. Uh, we selected people from uh, people from the community. We selected people who have been uh, uh, involved in case management and received support through case management. Um, um, then we started to conduct the survey and focus group discussion. At that time, there was a, at the beginning of a breakdown of COVID-19, and we we took all the mitigation measures into consideration. Um, for the location of the focus group discussion, as you can see in the tools, um, you, you need to take into consideration um, the safety of the location, the accessibility, the privacy, and also adherence to safeguarding standards. Um, after we finished or finalized the data collection, we started the analysis using the, the uh, tool number four, which is the guidance on how to analyze the data. And we involved our meal team on the analysis uh, of the uh, data. There was also like some interesting findings. Um, the majority of the people uh, reported that they have been from CVA assistance. Um, many families send their children back to school. There are also some risk raised by the community uh, about the distribution modality. Some people would prefer Hawala agencies. Some people um, recommended like to be hand in hand uh, in hand distribution and we we took all those uh, consideration into uh, we took all this uh, recommendation and issues into consideration uh, when we designed the next project that's all from my side i will hand uh, over to Lori again thank you thank you so much ibrahim it's so great to hear how these tools actually get used um and, and really interesting about emphasizing the point of adaptation and that that requires quite a bit of time. Um, so we've heard from colleagues from Peru, colleagues from Syria, thank you so much. Um, just to say that the resources are being linked in the chat box. Um, the French and Arabic resource uh, for this toolkit that Ibrahim was speaking of we have in draft version. So we are happy to share that with you. Um, you will see an email address in the chat box there, hannah.rachel.thompson at gmail.com. If you just reach out there for the, uh, for the draft versions, we're happy to get kind of feedback on the translation. So we can now move on to our next poll. Um, so if we can put that up, this is another true or false poll. And uh, our, our point here is risks associated with the introduction of cash and voucher assistance are related to context, age, gender, and diversity. Okay, I'm seeing responses come in. Maybe give it a few more seconds. And if you have any additional thoughts on this, it'd be great. Um, Feel free to put it into the chat box as well. Okay, I think we can probably close that there. So really interestingly, um, we had 94% of people say that yes, risks are associated, or sorry, risks associated 
with cash are related to context, age, gender, and diversity. And then we, we had 6% say um, that they don't think the statement is true, that risks associated with the introduction of cash and voucher assistance are, are maybe not necessarily related to context, age, gender, and diversity. Okay, aren't all risks in all programming related to these factors? Yes, yeah, so, and we're gonna hear a bit more about that um, and how, how we have to kind of mitigate these really specific risks considering the context we're working in, considering the age of the participants in our programming, the gender um, and the diversity. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Christopher Kagab, who is working for PLAN in Uganda. Thanks, Christopher. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Laurie. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, everyone. I am Kagawa Christopher, I'm monitoring evolution officer for International Uganda. I'm very happy to be with you today and present uh, this particular event. Uh, Plan International Uganda has been working on child protection and emergency interventions in the North uh, for over five years in the areas of Germany, Yumbe, Madiokolo, Terogo, responding to South Sudan, regional crisis in refugee settlements and most communities. Uh, currently, Plan Uganda is implementing a project titled Building Mental Resilience for Protection of Refugees and Host Communities, children, and recently in Western with severe component for child protection case management across the three districts of intervention. Uh, in this presentation, we will explain more about the CVA FGD risk assessment, key findings and mitigation strategies with a specific focus on adolescents. Uh, we did conduct a participatory exercise to identify the risks, uh, mitigation strategies, and relevant information through focus group discussions with the different categories of beneficiaries, such as adolescent girls, uh, adolescent boys, adolescent uh, in foster care, and accompanied adolescents, uh, caregivers, and community leaders. Uh, we did come up with a process which was to help us undertake the risk assessment, uh, but we had to undertake a number of tools. And from that, we had to train our internal staff who acted as enumerators in both uh, BDPD and uh, Renault Camp Refugee Settlement. After the training, we had to pre test the tools before moving to the field and uh, conducting a uh, risk assessment exercise. After collecting and documenting all the information from the FGDs, uh, we did analyze it and group the key findings into four categories. Uh, next slide. Next slide, okay, thank you. Uh, we, did, uh, we did identify uh, the risks and categorize them into four categories. One, we looked at uh, potential and child protection risks. Under this, we identified sexual and gender-based violence, uh, physical and emotional violence, uh, psychosocial distress, family separation, uh, family, family separation, for example, severe could be a good factor in a way that could encourage caregivers to abandon their children so that they can benefit from the assistance. We also identified economic and sexual exploitation if there is no monitoring. We also did identify access, access risks. These risks were associated with severe modalities and delivery mechanism. A case in point, community members, including vulnerable children and families, who may not be having mobile phones, the transfer of mobile money mechanism will be very, very hard. And also realize community members are not fully registered in the Sierra. It will be very, very, uh, they are very vulnerable in this case and they couldn't be easily registered and to receive, to receive support via cash. So this could not support everyone. We also identified the uh, risk of fraud and cash diversion. In this case, uh, cash in general for adolescents, adolescents' well being may be diverted to the caregivers for their personal gains. On the, hand, on the other hand, as well, uh, Cash may be used for intended purposes by adolescents, maybe drug abuse, maybe. Uh, <clears throat> might, might be drug abuse, uh, maybe uh, diversion of cash to other gambling kind of trade like sports betting. I uh, also did identify family and community relations. Under family and community relations, uh, 
we did uh, we did I realized there could be tensions coming up between caregivers or siblings. This may exist, but also there are also possible possible risks of community tensions and violence from the neighboring communities and also the community members as well. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. In addition to the risks, uh, we identified a number of mitigation strategies. One, uh, we identified counseling and guidance to children and caregivers. Uh, the counseling and guiding, uh, guidance was given to the child and the caregivers on how to use the cash based on the needs identified in the case plan, but also considering on ways how to alleviate potential tensions in the household. In this case, a caseworker uh, was to be assigned to guide the family on how best to use the cash based on the needs assessed, but also link the family to other life skills as well as conducting a positive parenting session with those families. The other one we factored in monitoring and the use of the cash. Under monitoring, this was to be done by the caregiver to ensure that the child's needs are being covered. In this particular case, our routine monitoring and consistent follow-ups will be very key during CV implementation. On the other hand, post-distribution monitoring uh, will be conducted, and this will be done by the M&A team, uh, the coordinators, case workers, to ascertain whether the CVA intended beneficiaries receive the correct, the correct amount of money during cash disbursement. We also uh, identified community awareness and sustainization. Community awareness and sustainization was to avoid jealousy from the neighboring communities during CV implementation. Thus, transparency, openness, and confidentiality will be taken up in high regard to in the community. Therefore, community leaders, village leaders, and leaders ultimately will be involved for safety, security, and protection, protection services among the city beneficiaries. Uh, contrary to that, communication will be done intensively with the national, local, and stakeholders, the community leaders, so that they can help clarify misunderstandings and disputes, just in case. And this is to ensure the community understands the consequences of any threat, but also participate throughout the project cycle. Uh, the other one, we identified complaint and feedback mechanism as a mitigation strategy. This was to be designed in a way that uh, the implementation and the designing of the complaint feedback mechanism is in two places. And this was to allow the beneficiaries to communicate in an easy, efficient, peaceful way through feedback forms, uh, through suggestion boxes, and also by hotlines. We also did identify a flexible design. In this area were specifically to allow flexibility in the design by using clearly verifiable beneficiary targeting criteria. Uh, for instance, this was to ensure the benefiting criteria is carried out in a transparent and perspective way with accurate and identifiable criteria in order to rigorously that is robust were followed and but this was ultimately to give the city beneficiaries some flexibility. Then as we move forward, uh, we had other one was a clear targeting criteria. Uh, definitely for us we were to use we were to use a community-based targeting and transparent process. This was to help us reduce tensions in the beneficiaries and non-beneficiaries, but also develop a clear exit strategy to help us minimize or limit expectations uh, from, from our colleagues and uh, the beneficiaries in the community. Uh, as I conclude uh, my presentation, uh, this together with other activities such as market assessments, internal and external risk analysis, have helped us, have, have helped us as plan to design our standard operating procedures for the implementation of the cash component. But also risk assessment and analysis will continue being embedded in our ongoing monitoring and follow-up actions we are doing. Uh, this will be done by the case workers through post distribution monitoring, monitoring team as well. But also we do conduct regular community engagement activities at field level. So uh, we hope to we hope to keep you posted on how civil implementation goes in Uganda. I would like uh, to end here my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christopher. And Anita, over to you. Yes. Um, thanks, Christopher. And thanks, uh, Anna. Uh, already shared the link uh, to this report in the in the chat. Uh, 
um, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to share with everybody that there is a, an evidence review which has been published uh, in 2020, which uh, collates findings from uh, um, program using cash uh, to achieve uh, outcomes for adolescents across the sectors. So not just for child protection, but also for education, health, uh, nutrition, etc. And the report uh, provides recommendation on uh, how cash uh, can achieve uh, outcomes for adolescents in humanitarian settings. Um, the report is available in English, but if you need version in French and Spanish, uh, you can be in touch with myself. I will put my email address in the chat. Uh, thanks. Thank you so much, Anita and Christopher. And Christopher, we really look forward to hearing more about how this gets rolled out in Uganda. Um, so if there are any questions, do feel free to write in the chat box. We've got people monitoring that as well. Um, otherwise, we can go on to the next slide and this will be our final poll for today. So one last true or false question. Children and their families risk spending money on unnecessary items if cash and voucher assistance is unrestricted. Okay, we'll give it a few more seconds. Really interesting findings coming out. Okay, great, thanks. I think this is our, our largest response yet. Okay, thanks so much. So we have really interesting results for this, that 58% of people said, yes, we think children and families risk spending money on unnecessary items if we don't restrict cash. And then we have about 42% saying false. Uh, that it's not a, a not a large risk or not a risk that they'll spend on unnecessary items if it's unrestricted. And this is a conversation that comes up quite a lot um, with kind of the move being towards having unrestricted cash assistance. Um, so what we have is an example next from Cambodia, and this is a video from a USAID funded um, project Family First Reacts. Um, and we'll see kind of how the family has decided uh, to spend their money um, and then can come back to this discussion afterwards. So without further ado, please feel free to share the video. សម្រាប់ព្រោះសាស្ត្រជាច្រើនផលប៉ះពណ៌ផ្នែកសង្គមសេដ្ឋកិច្ចបាននឹងកំពុងធ្វើឲ្យភាពងាររងគ្រោះ
ដោយមកមួយអង្គពីបន្តទៀសដែលជាសាស្រ្តហ្នឹងចង់បាននាមហារអរអចំវានសូរខុតគាត់ក្រោមជំនួយហិរញ្ញបទិនរបស់ពី
um, or that we think will be a result. And then our last question we're going to look at is what information and guidance would you need to design and implement cash and child protection programming? We're always looking to find out about what is that gap that needs to be filled to, to help us increase the evidence and to help us really achieve child protection outcomes with cash. Um, thank you so much. So in the chat box, you're going to see we've got jam boards. Please feel free with whichever room you're in to go in and just add your comments directly. Please feel free to add in any language. We will be able to translate it. Um, and we will give about 15 minutes just less in the breakout room. So we can open those up now. Okay, can I just add really quickly, um, you've all been assigned, although mo only a handful of people actually said what language preference they had. So there are three rooms, one room for Spanish, one room for French, and one for Arabic. So if you prefer to be in those, you can move yourself into one of them or just ask a facilitator or call us for help and we can help move you into the room of your choice. Okay, off you go. Will we get moved, Julie? Sorry. You should be, yes. Okay. Sorry, there's 30 rooms, so it might just take okay, a minute. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> I was just worried if I'm meant to be selecting something that I'm missing uh, and that's I couldn't see it, happening. that's fine. Sorry, bear with me. It seems um, everyone that's putting their um, their languages in the chat. Um, okay. I, I've, I was gonna say, unfortunately, <laughs> it's a little late for that at the moment, but if you are in the wrong room, um when when you get moved we'll sort it out afterwards so there's no there's no need to put your language in the chat hmm. this is interesting okay bear with me one second i keep opening it and it keeps closing it automatically bear with me one second Let me just see what's going on here because we don't have that many rooms. Hmm. Okay, sorry, bear with me one second. This is, uh, I'm just going to recreate them. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do it a bit differently. I, my, uh, I okay. couldn't see what Tom explained earlier, but just people are still, I think, putting their languages in the chat, if people can rename. It's yeah, it's okay. If they're putting it in the chat, just leave it in the chat. Um, there's there's not much we can do about it now. So if they're okay. commenting, it's okay. Okay. You just don't have to put it in the chat. It doesn't, it won't do anything. <laughs> Sorry, one second. I've just recreated them. Let me just rename them again. I'm not sure I've never had it not just open and be fine. Technology, our favorite thing. Oh, <laughs> right. Usually it works. When it works, it's great. When it doesn't. Okay. You know what? I don't want to waste your time. So here, oh, nope. I'm going to have to because you're all Q1. Just to say to everyone, or if I could please ask Kat to repaste the Jamboard links in just so they're at the bottom for everyone. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll be inputting into Jamboard directly. So do feel free to open up these links. You'll know which group you're in in a moment. 
Um, it will be in the room name, which group you are in. All right, thank you. Thanks, Kat. No problem. And I suggest, perhaps suggest that while we're waiting uh, to go into the rooms, people can start entering in the jumbled if they'd like um, already to. They don't know which room they're gonna be in. <laughs> is the issue hang on just one more mini mo i do apologize for this it's only because there are 30 rooms and i just need to rename all of them with your uh, questions Great. I do see people already clicking on those links. That's great. Um, and so you can, if you are interested, start inputting some ideas in whichever question was interesting for you. Oh, amazing. I already see some requests for guidance and information coming up. That's fantastic. And see some creative drawings that's also fun can i just add if if people are wanting documents i don't have your email address i'm sorry if i if um i can ask people to put their email addresses because i don't automatically have access to your email addresses so if you can just pop those in the chat when you're asking me for for materials then i can forward them to you and or email me directly in my Gmail and I can get back to you with the resources that we have. Oh. Um. <laughs> Sorry. A fun little uh oh. Okay. It has completely reorganized. And I only just realized that. Oh, it's not great. For Nympha, I don't think the rooms are actually set up yet. It's not working yet. So we'll you won't no. see it yet. Sorry, you won't we'll see repost it just when... yet. Yeah, bear with me. Um, organizers, facilitators, if you can, there are now 40 rooms instead of five rooms for, well, 10 rooms for each question, because um, I've not had enough time to go back and rename them all room one through five. So if you can just go to your questions, um, because you've actually all been moved around and I'm sorry to say interpreters just don't go because <laughs> it seems to want to move you as well now. I'm so sorry about this. I'm not sure what happened. Um, so I'm just going to repeat that for the interpreters just in case. Um, interpreters, please do not accept the invitation to join a breakout room. Okay. Don't worry, Julie, we're getting some great feedback regardless. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Oh, I'm so glad because this is this is like my nightmare. <laughs> Tech nightmares are some of the worst. Okay, so you're going to have an invitation pop up. So just accept the invitation, but interpreters do not accept the invitation. <laughs> and yeah. facilitators move yourself to your question rooms. Okay, this will work. It's just a <laughs> bit more of a headache than we anticipated. So off you all go, have a wonderful conversation. I don't see it, Julie. No, it's not. What? Ah, it keeps closing. Hmm. I think Julie, maybe let's not worry too much about it. Can I, can we? post the Jamboard links in again. Yeah. And um, yes. maybe we could project the PowerPoint that has the questions. And please just go to the Jamboard you find interesting if you want to add some comments in. Um, and then we're going to kind of be uh, gathering ideas and, and any other feedback you can also put in the chat box. And I'm, I'm seeing some really interesting um, post-its going on the Jamboard already, where yes. people are saying they're already working on things, or if they're asking for resources, or if they're saying they've got experiences, we'd love to be in touch. So do please 
when you're adding a post-it note, pop your name on. I know it's anonymous and that's fine if you want to leave it anonymous, but if you're wanting to share experiences, wanting to stay in touch going forward, please put your name and or your email address on the, on the post-it note you're adding to the Jamboard because uh, then we can can reach out afterwards because um, we'll be able to keep these Jamboards and, and stay in touch if, if you're wanting to. So pop email addresses in the chat oh. if you want uh, resources, contact us directly. We've pop, up, popped our email addresses in the chat, um, but also do feel free to pop your contact information in the Jamboard because they're anonymous at the moment, the post-it notes in the Jamboard. And um, Laurie, I don't know if this would be interesting, but would you like me to share the screen of one of the Jamboards? Maybe we can um, discuss um, discuss what's happening on the boards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I can just... put those up. I've got them. Do you want to start with question one? I think maybe let's give people just give uh, people a couple minutes. Yeah. And also I've asked the interpreters if it's okay to translate the questions again so people know which which room they want to go into because the titles are just in English. Oh I okay great. Thank you. So I'd say let's give three or four minutes and then let's start projecting. Thanks everyone for your flexibility. So sorry again, I'm really not sure what's happening. We've had a thousand people in breakout rooms.
Um, I, I, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry, cat. I was. Oh, just, I think we're saying just, the same thing. <laughs> probably. Just so you know, if if the first slide is too full, skip into the second slide, and you can fill up the second slide. It's the same question. Um, each Jamboard, it's just one question. So um, feel free to just skip into the next slide. And um, I all have to use slide one. And I have noticed that there might have been a few people that have joined since we started this session and mentioned that they're unsure what's going on. So we're not in groups at the moment. We are just working in this space. Um, the reason why you didn't hear anything is because everyone is working on the links that I've just reshared in the chat. Um, in a moment or two, we will be um, going over the responses that everyone has been putting in the questions there. Okay, I think uh, we might need to end uh, what was meant to be a group discussion uh, because we have a uh, few minutes left uh, and we would like to try to summarize uh, the main input which were given uh, per question. So um, may I ask, uh, um, is it possible to show the jumbo for question one? I know <laughs> it's... <laughs> Yeah, it might be a bit difficult to navigate this jumbo. Um, okay, and if possible, may I ask? Uh, I think it's Hannah. Um, well, we have two Hannah, Hannah H. Can you yeah. please provide? <laughs> Thanks. Sure. Please provide an overview of the yeah. main uh, challenges and risks associated uh, with the implementation of CVA for child protection. Thanks. Uh Absolutely. So we have a couple of themes um, that seem to be emerging here from this board. Um, the first one is around um, sort of a, a concern around a misuse of cash, whether that's either cash not being used for children or um, being misused due to a lack of um, financial literacy. Um, so there's a couple of concerns there around misuse, however that is defined. Um, then there's another selection of um, concerns that are around risks that it poses to the recipients or the beneficiaries of that cash. So we've got things like um, risk of abuse, people um, receiving cash or exploitation, um, and then also responses from other community members. So maybe either jealousy or um, stigma attached to those people receiving cash from other members of the community. That seems to be a concern um, for many. And then there's also a separate group of concerns that's around the sustainability and um, tendency of giving people cash. So whether it's a sustainable solution, provides long-term um, impacts, or whether it's going to lead to a culture of dependency amongst um, beneficiaries. Um, another concern is around, um, seems to be around corruption quite a lot. I'm not sure on the specifics of that because there's just um, the word corruption written um, in many cases, but fraud and corruption, um, around cash, maybe whether that's around um, 
concern within the agencies distributing the cash or maybe with the financial service providers or maybe with the beneficiaries and member of the communities could be at any level I guess that concern um, and then uh, the last concern um, well not a last one sorry another concern seems to be around um, that it is hard to measure the outcomes of cash particularly if that cash is not um, restricted, so not sort of a voucher for a specific good, but it's hard to see what the outcomes of that might be, particularly in regards to child protection outcomes. Um, there's also been a couple of concerns um, raised, and I'm not quite exactly sure how these fit in, but just to flag them, around sort of um, marriage or um, child marriage. I'm not sure if that's people saying, because we didn't hear from them, um, saying that they think child marriage might increase due to cash distributions, which would be mm. potentially interesting. I, I'm not sure what people are saying, but just to flag that that's there. And then also um, uh, uh, armed groups were mentioned as well. Um, but I assume that means there's a risk to um, the beneficiaries um, through theft or something like that. If they are receiving cash um, as physical cash. Those were kind of the main groups that I spotted. I mean, if anybody else wants to add anything, please do. Um, yeah. Thanks, Hannah. Um, and we could move to the next question. Yeah. Next I question is, yes, I'm, I'm just going to read the question, Hannah, following some requests in the chat. Next question is, how have you overcome certain barriers to using cash for child protection outcomes effectively? Anna, over to you, thanks. Yeah, so I've just sort of read through and please do add um, the group who's been putting comments in there. But to summarise uh, some of the ways in which people have been talking about uh, overcoming the challenges, uh, there are a lot around um, strengthening competencies and staff skills, um, creating coordination and involving different stakeholders, so CVA and child protection staff and colleagues, um, so that uh, they both sort of understand each other's um, sets of needs and wants and priorities better and can implement better. And there seem to be um, various post it's also about the subject of monitoring and repeated risk assessment and sort of maintaining that understanding of what uh, is happening, how it's being implemented. And, and I guess with the assumption that we have to adjust the way in which the cash and voucher assistance is designed based on what we're learning about how CVA impacts on child protection. Um, and then there's a point made about communication, adapting communication, having outreach communication, and being clear, especially with communities and adapting your communication strategy so that people understand uh, what the cash and voucher assistance is and how to use it. Um, and then there was a point made about family plans uh, to support them in understanding um, the sort of income they, well, my understanding of the post it note was to support them to understand what income they have and how they should plan the spending of their money. So, you know, this does reflect on the sort of some of the tools we've mentioned. So the, the meal toolkit can support that ongoing monitoring. It does have some risk identification strategies in, in the different uh, tools. So in the focus group discussion guide. Uh, and then we also have this Money Matters Toolkit that can help with that family planning and a kind of nudge uh, families into making choices and how they use their CVA. Um, is there anyone else who added to that Jamboard uh, who wants to highlight anything or to flag if I've misunderstood their note? Um, can I add something? Go ahead, yeah. Go ahead, Olivia. Yes. I also see a couple of uh, points highlighting um, the, the potential complications around transferring cash directly to children and whether children have access to mobile phones and they're able to receive the cash on their mobile phones or not, which will depend on the, you know, on the legal framework within a, within a given country. And you know, in some cases, you might look at uh, guardians or somebody else receiving the cash on behalf of the child. But there are a couple of points about that. Thank you. Sorry, they must have come on after. Yeah, there's there's new guidance. We'll we'll share some more links um, just after this. I'll, I'll copy and paste them in after we're done with these different breakout rooms. But there's a number of different uh, guidance documents already out there, but also that are forthcoming. So we'll highlight what's forthcoming that can support um, that process of, of assisting directly to children. 
Anna, Desiree raised her hand. She might have something to add. Yeah, please go ahead, Desiree. You're on mute, Desiree. I don't know if yeah. Euh, non, je, je viens de l'ouvrir. Bonjour, chers collègues. Bonjour. Oui, excusez-moi, je vais m'exprimer en français. En fait, il y a également un volet acceptation de la communauté. Parce qu'il ne faut pas oublier que dans certaines communautés, euh, ce n'est ne pas aux enfants de prendre la charge des adultes. Et donc, quand cela doit arriver, il faut aussi que la communauté accepte qu'on peut autonomiser la communauté à travers les enfants que ce soit euh, par les, les groupes, parce que je pense que Plan le fait très bien, on a les gouvernements d'enfants, on a les comités de filles et tout le reste, mais si on n'a pas une acceptation de la communauté, on n'aura pas une pérennisation de l'activité. Il faut également prendre en compte des éléments des personnes en mouvement, que ce soit les réfugiés, les déplacés, parce que vous arrivez, si on vous fait du transfert, il y a des pays où euh, il faut avoir un certain âge pour pouvoir avoir une carte, c'est cette carte qui vous permet de pouvoir avoir une puce. Donc, si on va faire un transfert, par exemple, par téléphone, ça, ça peut être limitatif. Ça dépend du type de transfert qu'on veut faire. Mais maintenant, ces personnes qui sont en mouvement n'ont pas toujours une bonne connaissance du marché. Donc, on peut, parce que nous, préalablement, dans notre travail, on a fait une étude. Mais maintenant, quand la personne se retrouve dans le marché, elle peut ne pas forcément... Euh, pouvoir se retrouver. Et ça aussi, c'est des mécanismes sur lesquels il faut travailler en amont avant de mettre en place le projet. C'est important. Et même pour la sécurité de ces personnes qui sont en, en déplacement, c'est important de prendre cela en compte. Surtout quand c'est des enfants qui sont seuls, euh, comme les enfants non accompagnés ou bien parfois les enfants séparés. Merci. Je, je vais essayer de traduire tout, mais je ne suis pas sûre que j'ai tout capté. Euh... Uh, so I'm, I'm going to try and translate what Desiree said into English, but I'm not sure I caught anything. So if uh, Olivia and Anita, if you've got anything to add in the translation. Oh, oh, then, no worries, because we could hear it on the English translation. Interpretation. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Thank okay, you. perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Anna, for trying. <laughs> um, I see other colleagues uh, have raised their hand. I'm so sorry, um, but we might need to move to the next question. Really, apologies for that. So, Pauline, um, I hope uh, maybe you can write your question in the chat or your comment in the chat and we will get back to you. Sorry for that. Uh, we have a few minutes left. Um, I think we can go to the third question. Um, Edouard, I think the next question is for you. Maybe we can just wait for the... John. Yeah, sure. So while it's while it's loading, I'll just read out the, the question. So what do you see are the, the benefits of integrating CVA and, and child protection? Um, so there's a wide range of, of different inputs, but I think that they can roughly be categorized into kind of two or three areas. The first is um, around the broader benefits of CVA, um, providing uh, dignity and choice uh, to, to those uh, that receive that cash and deciding how it's used uh, to mitigate uh, whatever risks uh, they they uh, determine are a, a, a priority, whether that be risk to their, their child or, or otherwise, and also just simply in meeting their basic needs, which in many ways and is implicated here can kind of indirectly uh, mitigate risk. If basic needs are, are met or responded to, uh, that can contribute towards uh, general mitigation of, of child protection risks. There are others that are slightly more specific. So there's mention of ensuring that children can attend primary and secondary education, uh, that they can increase uh, mental and physical abuse uh, and also uh, there were various mentions of, of child labor um, as um, uh, something that can be prevented or mitigated through the use of cash so some more specific examples of, of mitigation the third category uh, stepping back a bit from those specific elements is around the flexibility of, of cash and voucher assistance so it can be used either to to prevent and mitigate child protection risks or in certain cases respond to those risks as and when they arise for example through the use of individual protection uh, assistance in the form of cash or it can be used uh, to indirectly mitigate child protection risks so for example and as we saw in some of the the, the, the examples previously the video from Cambodia is an example 
uh, by uh, leveraging CVA, for example, for livelihood outcomes that can indirectly mitigate child protection risks, um, again, by diminishing child labor or simply enabling a family to sustainably meet their basic needs. So quite a, a broad array of comments, but I would have, I would categorize them in those three, three rough uh, areas. Thanks for inputs, everybody, and, and anyone else who'd like to contribute, uh, please feel free. Thanks, Edward, for this uh, very useful recap. Um, let's move to the last question, please. Right. This question was on tools and guidance, which is needed. And I will exactly. then over to Laurie. Thanks, Laurie. Thank you. So there's some really great uh, suggestions in here around practical implementation. How do we choose the modality? Um, what do we need to do to make sure that it's going to be oh, safe and secure? Uh, how, what are the budget implications? We also saw some requests uh, around capacity building, um, as well as some complaints mechanisms and uh, further monitoring and evaluation tools. Um, and then um, actually seeing what is the evidence, what is working, what is not, which would build off of those monitoring and evaluation tools. There's some other great suggestions, but for the sake of time, I will stop there and um, hand over to Jim to close us out. Sorry, can I Go be ahead, a little please. bit cheeky and intervene very quickly? Um, just some thoughts on forthcoming documents that will be available so people to keep their eyes on the Save the Children Resource Center website and Plan uh, International's website. Um, so I've just put the link for the UNHCR guidance that is available on, on supporting child protection through CVA in the, in the chat. Um, but also there is forthcoming um, some uh, learning modules that will be available online and in a face-to-face -face format, uh, looking at implementing CVA for child protection and how you prevent child protection risks associated with CVA. Uh, we're in the process of developing those and rolling, start rolling them out at the end of the year. Um, there is uh, forthcoming guidance on C uh, child cash and badge assistance for adolescents across all sectors, so any kind of um, sector response that you're expecting or outcomes you're wanting. There's forthcoming guidance that's available in draft form if you contact us on uh, giving CVA to unaccompanied minors and child-headed households. And um, there's one fourth piece. Um, uh, and the monitoring toolkit for adolescents. Yes, uh, and then uh, again, if you contact us, we have this draft version of a monitoring toolkit that would be for use for engaging adolescents in the monitoring process. Uh, sorry, I'll now hand over to Jim. Sorry for my interruptions. Not at all. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, yeah, we're going to close the session now. Um, just to say thanks for what amazing engagement. And so much good stuff coming through i mean what a great session it's been fantastic and the way people rolled with the slightly changing format as well was fantastic so yeah just to say thank you so much for everyone and their engagement and um, i believe there might be another slide that has some contact details on just to check that if people want to email directly and i think the emails have been going in the chat as well through the session um the protection cluster will contact you uh, to ask for your feedback on this session um, and you can see there the web page as well to see what else is going on. Two more events are on today. Um, one that I'm hosting, so I will promote. <laughs> um, but what is secure enough? Uh, good practice uh, to enhance women's housing, land and property rights in humanitarian response. That's at two o'clock um, Central European time. So do join us if you can. And later on, there's a session on digital technology and anti-trafficking action in crises, a practice view on opportunities and challenges. And that's on 1600 Central European time. And if you go to the globalprotectioncluster.org website, you will see the chance to register just like you did for this session. Um, but yes, that was it really from me, just to say thanks so much for your engagement and uh, a really wonderful, rich session. And I uh, hope you have a good rest of the day. Thanks so much for all the support team and for amazing organization.